on stress, transfer length and development length. You know that the principle of pre-stressing concrete is by transferring the stress from the steels to the concrete in order to generate a situation that compressive force is acting on the member to counteract the external load. In fact, the transfer of force between the steel and concrete actually take place gradually. It is mainly due to the bond between the concrete and steel. To ensure a good bond between concrete and steel, you need to make sure the tendon is clean and free from the loose rust and the concrete should be well compacted. There will be frictions and waging actions between the tendon and the concrete. You know that when the tendon is being stretched, its diameter will reduce due to the poison effect. Then, the checking force is released so that the stress can be directly transferred to the member. This will cause the tendon to regain to its original diameter. This creates a certain amount of waging actions and frictional force, which is known as the Hoyer effect. These frictional and waging actions will lead to some degree of losses in terms of distressing, where the tendon requires a certain transmission length for the full pre-stressing force to build out. Therefore, it is assumed that at the end of the tendon, which is free from force, the force will be zero at the end and gradually build up to its full value over a certain length. When the bond and the friction effects are sufficient to prevent the cable from slipping from the concrete, the length over which the force is finally built up here is known as the transmission length. Generally, after a distance of L displacement, the stress distributions will be assumed to be linear. This distance is considered as the square root of this LPT square plus the D square. The D is referring to the effective depth. In fact, the transmission length varies depending on the surface characteristic of the tendon, the diameter of the cable, and also the strength of concrete. It can be simply taken as 50 times the diameter of the strength. This slide shows the equations to determine the transmission length of the tendon. The LPT2 represents the upper bound of the transmission length, which is about 1.2 times the LPT, its transmission length. The transmission length can be calculated from this equation. There is a alpha 1, which is the factor used to determine the effects of the gradual release and the sudden release of the checking force. Alpha 1 will be equal to 1.0 if the checking force is released gradually. Otherwise, 1.25 is being used. The alpha 2 is used to represent the effects of the tendon. If circular tendon is being used, alpha 2 will be equal to 0 0.25. If 3 and 7 wires tendons is being used, you may use alpha 2 equal to 0 0.19. The 5 here represents the diameter of the tendon. This sigma PM knot here represents the tendon stress just after the checking force is released. It is the smaller value of these two, 0 0.75 times the FPK, 
or 0.85 times the FP 0.1K. Then FBPT represent the bone stress between the tendons and the concrete. There is a factor of eta P1 which is defined by different types of tendon. If it is an indented wire, eta P1 will be equal to 2.7. If it is 3 or 7 wire tendon, 3.2 is being used. The factor eta 1 represents the conditions of bond. Under normal conditions, eta 1 is taken as 0.7. If the bond conditions is good, you may use 1.0. Next, you will need to determine the FCTDT, which stands for the Design Concrete Tensile Strength at a certain particular instant. The T here represents the age of the concrete in days that you intend to determine its transmission length. This is obtained from this formula which is governed by the type of the cement. Depending on the type of cement, the S value varies. The T represents the time that you are analyzing in days, and the alpha represents the factors for the age of the concrete. If the concrete age is less than 28 days, the alpha is taken as 1.0. If it is matured, which is more and equals to 28 days, the alpha will be 0 0.67. The FCTD represents the design concrete tensile strength, which is given by this formula, 0 0.467 times FCTM. The FCTM can be obtained from the formula here depending on their grade. You may also obtain the value of FCTM from Eurocode Table 3.1 EC2 Part 1. With that, you are able to determine the transmission length.